Hello and welcome to this video where we will explore the fascinating story of the 10 plagues of Egypt in the book of Exodus. We will see how each plague was not only a punishment for the Egyptians, but also a challenge to their gods and a demonstration of God's power and love for his people. In the first part of the video, we will cover the first seven plagues and the gods they targeted. Let's begin with some background information. The Israelites were living as slaves in Egypt under the cruel rule of Pharaoh, who refused to let them go and worship their god. God heard their cries and sent Moses to deliver them. He gave Moses a series of signs and wonders to perform before Pharaoh and the Egyptians, to show them that he was the true God and that they should let his people go. These signs and wonders were the ten plagues. The first plague was the plague of blood. God told Moses to strike the Nile River with his staff, and the water turned into blood. This was a direct attack on Happy, the god of the Nile, who was considered the source of life and fertility for Egypt. The blood polluted the water, killed the fish, and made it unfit for drinking. The Egyptians had to dig wells to find fresh water. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard and he did not listen to Moses. The second plague was the plague of frogs. God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and frogs came out and covered the land. This was a direct attack on Hecate, the frog-headed goddess of fertility, who was associated with the Nile and the creation of life. The frogs became a curse instead of a blessing, as they invaded the houses, the beds, the ovens, and even the kneading bowls. Pharaoh begged Moses to take away the frogs, and promised to let the Israelites go. But when the frogs died and the land stank, he changed his mind and hardened his heart. The third plague was the plague of gnats. God told Moses to strike the dust of the earth with his staff, and the dust turned into swarms of gnats that tormented people and animals. This was a direct attack on Geb, the god of the earth, who was the father of the gods and the ruler of the land. The gnats came from the very soil that Geb controlled, and showed his impotence. The Egyptian magicians tried to replicate this plague, but they failed. They admitted to Pharaoh that this was the finger of God, but Pharaoh did not heed them and hardened his heart. The fourth plague was the plague of flies. God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the land of Egypt, and a swarm of flies came and filled the houses and the land. This was a direct attack on Kepri, the god of creation and rebirth, who had the head of a scarab beetle and was linked to the sun. The flies corrupted and destroyed what Kepri was supposed to create and renew. God made a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites, and spared the land of Goshen where his people lived. Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites go and sacrifice to their god, but only within the land of Egypt. But Moses refused, saying that they had to go three days' journey into the wilderness. Pharaoh consented, but when the flies were gone, he hardened his heart and did not let them go. The fifth plague was the plague of livestock. God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the livestock of Egypt, and a severe disease broke out and killed the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the cattle, and the sheep. This was a direct attack on Hathor, the cow goddess of love and protection, who was the mother of the gods and the patroness of women. The disease wiped out the animals that Hathor was supposed to protect and nurture. God made a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites, and spared the livestock of his people. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not let them go. The sixth plague was the plague of boils. God told Moses and Aaron to take handfuls of soot from a furnace and toss it into the air in front of Pharaoh. The soot became fine dust over the land of Egypt, and caused boils to break out on people and animals. This was a direct attack on Isis, the goddess of medicine and peace, who was the wife of Osiris and the mother of Horus. The boils afflicted the people and animals that Isis was supposed to heal and pacify. The Egyptian magicians were also affected by the boils, and they could not stand before Moses. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he did not listen to them. The seventh plague was the plague of hail. God told Moses to stretch out his hand toward the sky, and hail mixed with fire fell upon the land of Egypt. The hail struck down everything that was in the field, including people, animals, and crops. This was a direct attack on Nut, the goddess of the sky, who was the mother of the sun, the moon, and the stars. The hail came from the sky that Nut controlled, and showed her wrath. God warned Pharaoh and the Egyptians to bring their livestock and servants indoors, or they would die. Some of the Egyptians feared the word of the Lord and did so, but others did not. God made a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites, and spared the land of Goshen where his people lived. Pharaoh admitted that he and his people had sinned, and asked Moses to stop the hail. But when the hail stopped, he sinned again and hardened his heart. The eighth plague was the plague of locusts. God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the land of Egypt, and a wind brought locusts that devoured every plant and tree that the hail had left. This was a direct attack on Osiris, the god of vegetation and the underworld, who was the husband of Isis and the father of Horus. The locusts consumed the crops and plants that Osiris was supposed to protect and resurrect. Pharaoh confessed his sin and asked Moses to remove the locusts. But when the wind took them away, he hardened his heart and did not let the Israelites go. The ninth plague was the plague of darkness. 
God told Moses to stretch out his hand toward the sky, and darkness covered the land of Egypt for three days. This was the most severe and direct attack on R.A., the sun god, who was the king of the gods and the bringer of light. R.A. traveled across the sky in a solar boat, and was worshipped as the source of life and order. The darkness symbolized the defeat and death of R.A., and the chaos and despair of Egypt. The Egyptians could not see or leave their houses, but the Israelites had light in their dwellings. Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites go and worship their god, but he refused to let them take their livestock. But Moses insisted that they had to take everything with them. Pharaoh warned Moses not to see his face again, or he would die. Moses said, You are right, I will never see your face again. The tenth and final plague was the plague of the firstborn. God told Moses that he would strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both of people and animals, and that there would be a loud cry throughout the land. This was the ultimate and decisive attack on Pharaoh, who was considered the son of Are and the firstborn of the gods. The death of the firstborn would show that Pharaoh was not a god, but a mortal, and that he had no power over the Israelites. God also told Moses to instruct the Israelites to prepare a special meal, called the Passover, on the night of the plague. They had to slaughter a lamb and put some of its blood on the doorposts and lintels of their houses. They had to eat the lamb with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, and be ready to leave at any moment. The blood on the doorposts would be a sign for God to pass over their houses and spare their firstborn. This was a sign of God's covenant and salvation for his people, and a foreshadowing of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who would die for the sins of the world. At midnight, God struck down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the prisoner in the dungeon, and the firstborn of the livestock. There was a great cry in Egypt, for there was no house where there was not someone dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron, and told them to take the Israelites and their flocks and herds and go. He also asked them to bless him. The Egyptians urged the Israelites to leave quickly, for they feared that they would all die. The Israelites took their dough before it was leavened, and their kneading bowls wrapped in their cloaks. They also asked the Egyptians for silver and gold jewelry and clothing, and the Lord made the Egyptians favor them and give them what they asked. So they plundered the Egyptians. The Israelites left Egypt after 430 years of slavery, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children, and a mixed multitude of other people and livestock. They traveled from Ramesses to Sukkot, the first stage of their journey to the Promised Land. God went before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, to guide them and give them light. This was the end of the ten plagues of Egypt, and the beginning of the Exodus. We have seen how the ten plagues of Egypt were not only a judgment on the Egyptians, but also a revelation of God's power and love for his people. God used the plagues to show that he was the only true God, and that he could overcome any obstacle or enemy that stood in his way. He also used the plagues to show his grace and mercy to the Israelites, who were his chosen people and his treasured possession. He delivered them from slavery and oppression, and led them to freedom and worship. He made a covenant with them and gave them his law and his presence. He was their God, and they were his people. The story of the ten plagues of Egypt is not only a historical event, but also a prophetic one. It points to a greater deliverance and a greater exodus that God would accomplish through his Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the true and better Moses, who came to rescue his people from the bondage of sin and death. He is the true and better Passover Lamb, who shed his blood to save his people from the wrath of God. He is the true and better Israel, who obeyed God perfectly and inherited the promised land. He is the true and better King, who reigns over all the nations and all the gods. He is the true and better God, who became flesh and dwelt among us, and who will come again to judge the living and the dead. The story of the ten plagues of Egypt is also a personal one. It invites us to examine our own hearts and lives, and to ask ourselves, who is our God? Who do we worship? Who do we trust? Who do we obey? Who do we belong to? Are we like Pharaoh, who hardened his heart and resisted God's will? Are we like the Egyptians, who followed the false gods and suffered the consequences? Are we like the Israelites, who experienced God's salvation and responded with faith and gratitude? Or are we like the mixed multitude, who joined the Exodus but did not fully commit to God's covenant? The story of the ten plagues of Egypt is also a practical one. It teaches us how to live as God's people in a world that is hostile and rebellious to Him. It teaches us to trust in His sovereignty and His promises, to obey His commands and His guidance, to worship Him in spirit and in truth, to celebrate His grace and His goodness, to share His gospel and His love, and to hope for His return and His glory. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more biblical insights. Also, feel free to leave a comment below and let us know what you think. What is your favorite plague and why? How does the story of the ten plagues of Egypt impact your life and faith? We would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and God bless you.